everybody welcome back so my last video that I did on cutting faux leather with the Cricut Joy got a lot of traction and there have been a lot of questions um, a lot of things that people were a bit confused about so I decided to do another video um, if you watched the first one then I would definitely recommend watching the second one because it might answer some of the questions that you had so what we're going to be using is the Cricut Joy and we're going to be using a normal fine point blade. Nothing special about it. Okay, so I have some faux leather here that I got from Craft Buddies. Oops, see I just threw it all over the floor. So I have kept my off cuts and I think I'm going to try and utilize some of these. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be making some jewelry. Um, you could make anything you want, so it doesn't have to be jewellery. So I think I want to do something with that. And then I possibly want to do something with the blue, which is the set that I recently got. It has some bluey with it. Absolutely gorgeous. So I'm thinking, I really like this. Um, so I'm thinking there should definitely be something with blue. Let's have a looky looky and see if that matches. That's pretty cool. And this is a really thick one, so this might be good to show the capabilities. So that might be something interesting. So what I want to do is I want to go through some cut setting adjustments. So somebody had pointed out that you can't rerun it on the Joy. Now I haven't used my Joy in a while. Um, if we do run into that problem, what I'll do is I'll show you how to set it up so that you actually can cut it um, maybe not cut it again but you can set your cut settings to cut through completely so um, let's get into the design aspect of it it's super simple but I do want to show you how to adjust your cut settings and create a new cut setting if it doesn't allow us to cut it again so let's jump into that and then we'll come back and make it our design portion of this video is not going to be super in-depth so the point of this video is more troubleshooting with you, um, going through some of the questions that you had and making sure that you can actually cut the material. Once you've got that down, the designs are pretty simple. So I really don't think that we need to go through it too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to search for earrings. We're going to use a pre-designed project. As you can see, there's actually a whole bunch here under images, and a lot of these would work. Just remember, you are working with faux leather, and for that reason, you're going to want to have um, something that isn't too intricate. So, for instance, you're not going to want to go for something like this. Um, you would rather go for something like the stacked earrings. So, I'm just trying to get an idea of what we're going to do here. So let's add this to screen. Okay, so I've actually already got a pair here, and that is a plain and simple pair. So we're going to make that. This is here. And I think for this, I actually want to use, hmm, I think I want to use my blue. So we would have here being a light blue and here being a glitter. So it was kind of a bluey green. Not that way too bright. Yeah, I think it was something more like this. Okay, so then we're going to make a pair like this. So we're going to say duplicate it. And for this, I again want it to be layered. Um, but we're going to, so let's say contour, we're going to hard this so that it's just one piece like so. We're going to duplicate that and we're going to put that like that. So that's going to be our second pair of earrings. Our first pair is obviously our little uh, teardrop, if you will. So what we're then going to do is we're going to add in a circle and we're going to make the circle super, super small like super small. So that is going to be the hole that our, yeah, that is going to be the hole that our little earring piece goes through. 
So let's say align center horizontally. You know what? Let's do both of these and say align bottom. Uh, our little dots are going to move. It's fine. Those did not look too appropriate. We're just going to move them back. Okay, then we're going to say align center horizontally, align center horizontally. I didn't, um, I didn't plan on it being this sort of intricate, if you will, but we're here now, so. Okay, it does help to zoom in a bit. There we are, perfect. And we're going to do the same for this. Okay. Now remember when you're slicing, you can only slice one thing, uh, well, two objects at a time. So it would be the circle and one of your other objects. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to click on it and the circle, and you're going to say slice. And then you're going to want to click on the blue part with the circle and slice as well. And that is going to give us our sections with the holes. So those holes are a little big, um, but it's fine. Again, this is more just um, for you to see the troubleshooting steps and how we can work around some of the problems that people encountered last time. And there we are. So with the second pair, we're going to actually be using our, um, what is it called? This will be our animal print. And then the back will actually be a sort of darker color. So it's going to be a more elegant looking, if you can say that. So let's get to making this. Um, so you're going to obviously want to make sure that your machine is set to the correct machine. You're going to say make it. You're going to connect to your machine. And then I'm going to show you how to do your cut settings. So as you can see here, we're going to need about, what's that, nine inches, about nine centimeters of material. Um, so about nine, six, seven, and six. So about nine centimeters of each should be sufficient. So let me show you how to adjust your material setting, and then we will get to cutting it. Once you've said make it, your machine's connected, it's got, now going to show you what materials you can choose. So in my last video, I said that you need to look for faux leather, paper thin. So that is what you would use. But if that material setting doesn't work for you on your joy, say you can't rerun it um, and it's just not cutting through, then what you can do is you can actually create your own material setting. So what you would do is down here, it says material settings in green. You would click on it and this will show you all of the different material settings. So what we're going to be looking for is the faux leather paper thin. So you can see here that it has a cut pressure of 251 uh, and it is two passes with a fine point blade. So we're going to keep 251 in mind, which is your cut pressure. Okay, and we're going to go all the way to the end of this. Here you see add a new material. So you can put your faux leather custom, you're going to put your name, and you're going to say save. You're now going to change it, and you're going to change this to 251, which is exactly what the last one is. And you're going to put it on three times passes. So you can play with your pressure. You can play with the amount of passes it does. It's completely up to you what you choose to do. So we, I'm going to leave Foley the custom and I'm going to keep it on the same cut pressure with three passes and I'm going to save that. So what I would suggest you do is maybe use some of your off cuts of faux leather and test that before um, going ahead and investing in a whole piece of faux leather. Okay, so firstly, what I'm going to do, and that's just so that we can troubleshoot together, is I'm going to cut with the old setting so that we can see if, if 
cricket has changed it and you really can't run it again. And then you, you'll know to automatically go and create a new cut setting. Then we're going to use the new cut setting and see how that holds up if it gets us through. If not, we can increase the passes and all the pressure and we can try again. So let's get to making it. So I think one of the main parts that people got a bit confused at was me applying the faux leather in a way that stops it from coming off of the mat. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you on two different mats. I'm going to show you on an older mat and I'm going to show you on a new mat. Depending on the condition of your mat, um, you will use either of these options. Okay, so we are first going to use our older mat. And I'm just going to trim this down so that it fits nicely. Um, so we'll use this way. And we need about 9 centimeters. So remember we don't want it going over because we don't want it going under the roller bars. Okay, so this is the older mat. If your mat is older, this is the method that you're going to use. So here I have double-sided tape. This is a thin double-sided tape. And that is important it has to be thin otherwise it's going to block your material from going under the rollers so what you're going to do is you're going to layer it under your faux leather like so okay and we can trim it down when we're done it's not a train smash and this double-sided tape is relatively cheap you do get much bigger pieces um, so if you want Bigger ones, I mean, you don't even have to layer it directly next to each other. You can leave a little gap in between. Obviously, the more you apply, the better your hold is going to be. So for older mats, you're going to want to apply something that's going to stick to your mat. And it's not going to move as it cuts. So I think this is where some people did battle. Okay, we're just going to trim this down again not 100% necessary okay and then we're going to remove our backing for each of our double sided tapes and I use this method for all of my machines it doesn't just have to be a joy if your mats old this will help you okay let's uncover our old mat still has some stickiness though we're going to place this down like so and we're going to stick it right so I have my joy set to faux leather paper thin which is the initial setting that I did advise so we're just going to okay you have to get it while it's still flashing there we are it's got it let's move her forward so you can see And we're going to say go. Now, before you unload it, you do want to double check that it is cut through completely. And as you can see, it has. So if I look on my screen, there is something that says rerun. So I'm just going to shoot over that to that quickly so you can see. So if you wanted to go again, you would say rerun. There is a limit to the amount of times you can do this though. So that is something to remember. Okay, so we're unloading this. And this is cut beautifully, actually. Okay, so you can see it is on the backing of our faux leather. We just peel it off, like so, nice and simple. We probably could have, oh, there we are, it came out perfectly. Look at that. Beautiful. Our mat and our faux leather is clean. We're going to do the next piece the same way. It's looking a bit chaotic here. 
Okay, so we're going to do the next piece the same way. The next piece is going to be our sort of leopard one. And we're going to use the same setting, which was faux leather paper thin. We're going to prepare it in the exact same way. And you can see I am leaving a gap. So let's see how this does compared to the last one where I put it very close together. Okay, so we've tried now with our faux leather that has a more of a fabric backing. Worked perfectly. And I'm doing this right in front of you so you can see I'm not doing anything that you can't do at home. There's nothing that I've added to the mat that I haven't shown you. Everything is exactly as you see it. So let's take this uh, double sided tape off here. So as you can see that's completely clean. If I stick it to my mat it is going to stick but it's not very good. So you can see it comes off very easily. So the pressure from the cuts is going to push it around. Okay, so let's move on to our second method now. Okay, for our second method, what we're going to be doing, I just want to check that I have some. So I have some, this is plastic book wrap. Um, you can buy it at most supermarkets. So we will take some of that one. Um, I actually don't know. I think I might have enough transfer tape. So it's kind of the same as transfer tape. So I've got some transfer tape over here. And I think it will be enough actually. Uh, yeah, this will be enough. So let's just fold that in half and have a look. So this is now if you're using a brand new mat. And the purpose of this is to save your mat. It's not to keep the faux leather on the mat. It's literally to save your mat that's what it's for so brand new mat I'm just opening it now there we are and what you're gonna do is you're gonna uncover your mat and you're going to stick your transfer tape onto your mat. So you're sticking it upside down with the transfer tape side down. So this is the backing and that must be upwards. So what's going to happen when we uncover this, we're going to um, we're going to show the sticky side of the transfer tape. So we're first going to cut this one. Gorgeous. Look at that. Love it. We're now going to remove this. So you can see my transfer tape is now protecting my mat here. And we're going to stick this down. Like so. So for this, I would use my roller, my brayer. And that's just going to make sure it's down there nicely. We're going to try this on the faux leather paper thin. And we're going to see if we have good results with it. If we don't, we will move over to our other setting. We'll rerun this one. And then we'll move over to our other setting if needed. So as you can see, what happened was there was an edge that had nothing sticking it down. Okay. And that actually got caught and that caused everything to rip. So that's something you need to be mindful of. But look how beautifully that cuts. So I'm going to have to cut another one of these. But that's, again, completely, completely fine. Okay. So we're going to redo that one. Now, personally, I do prefer 
the double sided tape method I do think that it works a lot better um, so we're gonna have this like so I hope I'm placing it correctly otherwise it's not gonna work unfortunately we're only gonna know once we do it so another thing you can do instead instead of using a normal grip tape you can use a strong grip tape that, uh, yeah so a strong grip transfer tape that will work Okay, so we had slight movement here but it has still cuts it's just kind of here that it didn't cut so beautifully but that's completely fine again we can make that work so let's try it now with our strong grip tape and see if we get a different result with that so again you're just going to take this off of your mat And while this is not going to save your mat from cuts, it is going to save it from little bits of fur and the rest of it that's on the back of the faux leather. Okay, so the next one we're going to do with strong grip tape. This is our strong grip tape and we are using the faux leather custom setting. So what I also want to do is I just want to turn this upside down and I don't know if my strong grip tape is going to hold this because I'm putting glitter side down but we're going to try and we're going to see what happens. If it doesn't work we'll do it the right way up. Now I would only suggest, uh, this is super sticky, yeah, uh, wouldn't even let the tape go. So I would only suggest putting it face down if it's a very chunky glitter and I think you're going to give it the best opportunity to cut that way. Okay, that's super sticky. We are going to brayer it down and this one I've put on our custom setting which was three passes. Okay, we're going to test it to see if it's cut through and it has look at that so we can unload so that was three passes look at that it cut beautifully wow and again we're just going to take our tape off of here so this one, three passes was perfect, it didn't even cut into the mat, and it didn't, okay, it did tear the transfer tape, but very briefly, or just a little bit, should I say. Okay, so we're going to cover up our mat, and then we're going to finish off these earrings. Super, super simple. Now I think this part of the video is super simple, but we're going to finish it off, we're going to take it the whole way. So what you're going to need is you're going to need some jewellery findings. Now I think I'm going to go with silver. I don't know if I want to go with um, with gold. We'll need two of those, and we're gonna need some of the little pieces to connect it. Um, so I was thinking of maybe going with gold for the blue, but I don't think so. I think silver matches, yeah, silver. So we're going with silver for both. Let's get to putting it together. So we're going to want to open our little rings. I like to turn them sideways. We're going to slot this on. Then we're going to slot this one on.
And look at that. Bum bum bum. How simple. How absolutely simple. So let's get rid of that. Let's do our next one. So this is why I said don't stress too much where it didn't cut properly. So you might not want to sell something like this, but you can still gift it to somebody. Um, and I love gifting handmade things. So much love and thought goes into it. And I love getting handmade things because I know somebody actually took that time on me, you know. So for me, that's very special. So what we can also do, you can see there's little, I call them flyaways. Um, so you're just going to very lightly, from the back, just very lightly burn it. And that's going to help get rid of your flyaways and stop it from fraying anymore. Oh, that's so pretty. So look at those pretty blue ones okay now let's do our other ones so with these I do kind of want to put a little extra piece on it I don't know if it's gonna allow for it but I hope it will because I think it's gonna look super pretty so with these I definitely do want to fray the edges or burn the frayed edges not fray the edges and that's just gonna stop it from pulling and giving that ugly look and you just don't want to do it very quickly because if you do it for too long, it's going to go black. And that's not going to look pretty. Oh, look how pretty these are. Those are so pretty. Okay, so you can see this one. I don't know if you can see that but this one I've like burnt the edges this one I haven't so this one looks a lot cleaner so if you do forget you just ta -da. and then the same for here and there just like that really pretty earrings done really quick so I hope that this has answered the questions that you may have had. Um, I don't think there was anything that I didn't answer or that I didn't clarify on. So if you're still stuck, please do let me know. I will try to help as much as I can. And don't forget to let me know if you'd like me to do foiling on faux leather. Maybe we can do like a sunglasses case or something. Um, I don't know if that would work with the joy though. So we'll just have to figure that out and see what would work in terms of sizing. But um, I really do hope that this has helped you. Don't forget that I still have that giveaway on my last video. I will announce the lucky person very soon. Um, I am giving away some vinyl, bobo balloons, um, some window boxes. It's a really cool prize. So if you're interested in that, go and have a look at my last video and you will see the details. Thank you so much for watching and I can't wait to see you again soon. Oh.